mom, dad, recognizing when your child has a problem with the tonsils and or adenoids can go a long way. Does your child have symptoms of tonsillitis? Or is your child snoring and having problems with breathing? Well, tonsils produce antibodies when the body is fighting an infection. And like tonsils, adenoids are part of the body's uh, defense against infection. In this video, we will talk about tonsillitis, what are the signs and symptoms, how do doctors diagnose and treat it. We will also talk about signs of enlarged tonsils and adenoids, and is surgery recommended? Hey, I'm Dr. Christine Albaquiat. I'm a board-certified pediatrician, and my mission is to help moms and dads deal with child health problems to raise happy and healthy kids. The tonsils and adenoids. What are tonsils and adenoids? So when you look into your child's throat, you might notice a pink oval-shaped mass on each side. These are known as the tonsils. They are small in infants and increase in size in early childhood. As mentioned, they produce antibodies when the body is fighting an infection. And how about adenoids? So they are part of the child's defense as well. They are located in the very upper part of the throat, uh, above the uvula, and behind the nose. And they can only be seen by the use of special instruments. Is your child experiencing tonsillitis? Tonsillitis is an inflammation of the tonsils, usually due to an infection. Sometimes, the tonsils are enlarged, but there is no infection. But most often, it is the infection that caused the tonsils to be larger. Now, what are the symptoms of tonsillitis? The tonsils appear red and swollen. There might be yellow or white coating. Your child might have a throaty voice or complaining of sore throat. There is pain on swallowing. And the lymph nodes in the neck might be swollen. Or your child might have a fever. How is tonsillitis diagnosed by the doctor? Well, the cause of tonsillitis might be viral or bacterial. The symptoms are the same for both causes. And what the doctor does is to perform a strep test to determine the appropriate treatment. In the doctor's office, the doctor will examine your child's throat using a tongue depressor and using a light and would look for redness, white spots, or swollen tender lymph nodes. Then your doctor may also perform a rapid strep test or for more accurate results, a throat swab and to send it for throat culture. Remember to seek help immediately if your child has trouble breathing or is drooling and to seek help immediately as well if your child has difficulty swallowing, is extremely weak or fuzzy. Treatment for tonsillitis? Well, if the cause of your child's tonsillitis is viral, it will go away on its own. But if it's bacterial like a strep throat, your doctor would prescribe antibiotics. And your child will usually improve in 2-3 to three days. To help your child feel better, you can give your child uh, liquids which are cold or warm and as long as they're not hot. And you can have your child gargle warm salt water, take lozenges, and over-the-counter pain medications are helpful as well, such as ibuprofen or acetaminophen or paracetamol. You can have your child eat a popsicle or eat ice cream as well. Remember, prevention is always the key, so frequent hand washing is important and avoiding sick people. Is your child breathing through the mouth or snoring? Does your child have large adenoids or large tonsils and surgery is recommended? Well, before we go to that, are you expecting a baby? Or you have a newborn? Well, congrats, mom and dad. 
how much better life can be when things are under your control upon baby's arrival. When you immediately feel confident about breastfeeding your baby, or you know how to soothe a crying fuzzy baby, or you know when to worry and call the doctor. When you understand postpartum depression, how much better life can be when you can get the training in the comfort of your own home. Well, I've developed an online training video series known as the 5 Newborn Care Strategies. Do check that out in the description section. So does your child have a large adenoid? It is not always easy to tell. Some are born with large adenoids, while some have temporarily uh, enlarged adenoids due to colds or infections, which are common in young kids. But the constant swelling or enlargement of adenoids can lead to other problems such as ear infections or sinus infections. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of large adenoids? If you note that your child is breathing through the mouth, or if the nose sounds blocked, there is noisy breathing during the day and snoring at night. Your child may have both tonsils and adenoids enlarged when you note breathing stops at night during snoring or loud breathing, and this condition is known as sleep apnea. When you note that your child is choking or gasping during sleep, when your child experiences difficulty swallowing, especially solids, and when there is a constant throaty voice. The condition may be severe when your child has difficulty breathing because it interferes with the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. It is important to recognize this because it may interfere with your child's normal sleep pattern. It is important that you let your pediatrician know about it. Does the tonsils and adenoids need to be removed? There are two types of operations, tonsillectomy, which is to remove the tonsils, and adenoidectomy, to remove the adenoids. Your pediatrician might recommend surgery if the swelling of the tonsils or adenoids makes normal breathing difficult and has led to behavioral problems, bedwetting, sleep apnea, and poor school performance on your child. Or if the swollen tonsils uh, has led to problems with swallowing. Or the adenoid problem has, has made breathing difficult or has altered speech. And excessive number of severe throat infections in a year is another indication for surgery. Does your child need surgery? I know it might be scary, but it is better that your child knows what will happen before, during, and after surgery. Do not keep it a secret. It might be scary, but it is better to be honest with your child. If your hospital has a program, you can help your child get familiar with the hospital and the operating room, and if allowed, you can stay with your child during the visit. Your pediatrician can help you and explain to you the procedure as well to make it uh, less scary for you and your child. If you like this video, watch my next video where I teach you about other child health problems.